Hi, this is my Electrolux induction range. It's presenting with an E31 error code, which means it likely has a bad power control and filter board. I'll show you in this video how I got to those boards. I started by removing the oven door. There's a latch on each hinge. Once moved out of the way, the door can be tilted back up and easily removed. Here I pulled out the drawer to gain access to the screws that can adjust the rear leveling height. I raised the back to make it easier to pull out the range. As I pulled out the range, I periodically stopped to make sure that I hadn't snagged it on anything. Once I was out far enough, I unplugged it. Most of the screws will accept a Phillips bit, but I found that a square bit works better. There are quite a few screws that need to be removed in order to remove this back panel. There is a lot of hardware. I recommend coming up with some sort of organization technique that will allow you to keep track of which screws go with which parts. I use separate Tupperware containers and labels to keep track of everything, and I still get a little confused. There are two screws toward the back on each side. Once all four screws were removed, I was able to slide out the back panel. And here I am removing that little back panel. Each vertical panel is locked in place with two screws. Once the two screws have been removed, slide open the drawer and the panels can slide out as well. This is what the panel looks like on the other side. This is where using that square bit came in handy. I found using the Phillips bit, uh, the screws, the little black screws tended to want to strip. Most of the screws take a size R2 drill bit, but this one uses the smaller R1. There's six screws total holding in this plastic panel. Once they're removed, you can just slide it out. There are four electrical connectors that need to be carefully separated. Take note that two sets of connectors look pretty similar. You might want to take a picture. Here I'm pointing at this white wire. 
It leads to a small connector on the circuit board. It's the fifth electrical connection on the front that needs to be removed. There is one more screw toward the front on each side that needs to be removed, and three more screws on the front side that I will point out here in a moment. That's a total of five screws that need to be removed, and then the countertop will be almost free. There's one last step before removing the countertop, and that is disconnecting this Christmas-themed power connector in the back. Before removing the cook surface, I first cleared a large flat area and laid down some towels. I'm not quite sure how best to grab this thing. It's a little heavy, but the important thing is to not pinch any cables. Avoid the temptation to flip it over. You're gonna need it right side up. There's a few more screws to remove. This one here in the middle I'm pointing at on the front and three more on each side for a total of seven. Unfortunately, I didn't capture it on video. You might notice here in a moment that the things on the inside of this cooktop are a little bit disheveled. That's because I made the mistake of first trying to take it apart upside down. After peeling back the first layer of insulation, there should be a shiny metal panel held in by one screw. You don't see it here because I removed it while I had things upside down. Each element is connected with two power cables and an electrical connection. I'm using a T-bit, which I'll show in a moment, uh, to remove those two power cables. You don't need to back out the screw all the way, just a little bit. And then the electrical connector you can just remove by hand. I think it makes sense to start with this front and left element. Once it's out of the way, the other ones are easier to remove. Each element rests on three springs. You don't see them here in the video because I did things upside down and they fell out. But feel free to take them out and put them aside. Okay, and here I'm showing the square bit that needs to be used in order to remove those little metal panels. As I said, uh, there was a panel on the other side as well, I just didn't have it on video. Once you remove the screw, it just slides out.
Once disconnected, you can remove the elements by just lifting them off. Set them aside somewhere safe. Okay, we're almost there. This layer of insulation can simply be lifted out. Back to the square bit, there's quite a few screws holding in this top panel. All right, then I grabbed a 9mm socket, and I used that to disconnect the nut that's holding the grounding cable to this panel. All right, and with that, I'm able to remove the metal panel and the second layer of insulation. All right, finally got inside. We can take a look at what's going on. There's visible damage here on the power filter board. This PCB fuse blue. It's for the left power control board. Looking over the rest of the board, I don't see anything else obviously damaged. Moving on to the right power control board. This is responsible for powering those two right elements. I don't expect there to be any damage here based on the error code. Onto the left power control board, looking for some visual damage. And I spot some there on those two transistors in the front, as well as uh, there's three or four Zener diodes down there that are just gone. So the two damage boards need to be removed. They can be either then repaired or replaced. I was told to be very careful with these white connectors as they're quite delicate. The power control board is held in place with two screws, so you see me removing them here. The two power control boards are connected together at the heatsink with these little metal clips. I, I pried them off carefully using a flathead screwdriver and some needle nose pliers. And here's a closer look at those heatsink clips. And now the left power control board can be removed. Back to the power filter board. Here I'm removing each of the cables.
Thanks to the camera tripod deciding to pan on its own, you get this nice shot of the insulation. Unlike the other board, the power filter board does not have screws on the front, but it still can't just be removed. You have to flip it over to get access to the screws on the back. Now that all the power terminal screws have been removed, push aside any cables to get them out of the way and the board can just come out. 